Hey guys, it's me, Man Action, bring us some more things, right? Ace Attorney Trials and Tribulations in the last part. We, uh, I believe, we found out that Kudo was sent outside uh, five minutes of time between when the murder supposedly happened and when the police turned up that I encountered for. Uh, we tried to find Mr. Armstrong, we couldn't find him, and my mouse is just dropped to the floor. God damn it. <laughs> and uh, we went to Maggie, we gave her our lunch, but she she was not having any of it. She told us that that uh, that the customer, the only other customer was actually a woman. And then we go to him, we go to Gumshoe, and there's a virus corrupting all the computers in the uh, police department. And uh, the virus that's actually doing that is the MC Bomber. So right now we actually have the MC Bomber virus with us right now. So we found out what that that CD was. Uh, it wasn't just a it wasn't just a hot fire mixtape. It was a virus the whole time. The whole time. Anyway, here we are at the criminal affairs department, and uh, we have to show him this girl because he's talking about it in the last part. You want to stay stay away from her, okay? I mean it. She does look kind of unforgiving, doesn't she? That should be the least of your worries, pal. What's that supposed to mean? What could be worse? Her name's Viola Cadaverni. Verni. She's a she's the only granddaughter of Bruto Cadaverni. Bruto Cadaverni. Do you know who this who who that is, Nick? Never heard of him. Bruto Cadaverni is. The voice of the Cadaverini's Ver family. Can we stop using that word? I I'm having a problem saying it. That's one scary sounding name. We can't touch them. They're way too powerful for the police. But you're t thinking of talking, taking them on, aren't you? N no, I don't remember even ever saying I was going to. I better get some more information from this family. Who is this family? I'm sure if I really wanted to get involved in this, but who are the Calaveranese? Who are they? A scary bunch of people, that's who. You're a cop and you're scared? What's that about? Trust me, it doesn't matter if you're a kid or a cop, these guys are scary. They've got some serious clout and criminal in the world. We can't touch them, they've got too much moolah. Moolah? As in... <laughs> that's pretty much... That's pretty much control all the cash on the city's black market. The black market, huh? And that's the inclusive to the lender, I take it. Sure, no one, no one stands up to Bruto Cadaverni. I mean, and I mean no one. Interesting. So Viola is the granddaughter of some mafia boss, right, then. And, <laughs> yeah, and everyone knows how much Bruto loves his little girl. She means everything to him. So, how did she end up at the lender? I don't know, pal. But I heard she and the boss of Tenderlander are pretty tight. Tight. That's why it's that's what it said in the file I related to Maggie's case. Sounds like a pretty cute important clue. Ah, I can't believe it. I almost forgot the, the most important thing. And uh, and that is, you know, the lunchbox. How did everything go? L lunchbox? You remember the weenies. I hate weenies. Oh, yeah, those weenies. So, how did my weenies taste when they went went down the hatch? Um, they were really good. <laughs> well, it was delicious. Yeah, that's what she said. Really? Well, yeah, not exactly. Don't worry about it, pal. I figured out so I figured something would happen, so I can be prepared. Prepared? What do you mean? I made a jumbo lunchbox. Oh, do me a favor again, pal, and deliver this. Are you sure? This is sure a heavy, sure it's a heavy burden in more ways than one. Ooh, I've been sitting down for too long. <laughs> Weenies again, Nick? Tell me you don't have to eat all those too. Oh man, all the all this talk of weenies is making me hungry. Anyway, I think that's it for this area. We did everything we needed to do. So, uh, yeah, we've done nothing, there's nothing else we can do, so let's go to the detention center. 
Okay, so Maggie's gone. Uh, what we need to do is go to Blue. Sh oh, does it mean that we can? Hold on, oh, I need to check something. Let me look in the court record, just in case I I have everything that I can use to. Yeah, because right now we just so we found that. Oh, they're a freaking. Of course, they would know about this. Okay, blue string zinc. All right, lady, it's time to spill the beans. Mm, Glenn's troubles. So about you, about you. So, how about you tell me what kind of trouble Mr. Elg was in? I'm sorry, sir, but we don't deal with troubleshooting here. Perhaps you could speak to someone in customer service. What's she talking about? I guess I'd better just take a shot and see what it gets. Miss Basil, let me ask you something. Did Mr. Elg troubles have something to do with this? All those losing tickets. He was in there. He, he was he didn't have any money so he was trying to with that many tickets you could get one dollar at the recycling center you could you good people are very very bad cashing in on others misfortunes is immoral why did i get a whiff of hypocrisy just now but what is what is the relevance of these tickets the victim mr glenn l he had a gambling habit did he I don't think that that's a logical conclusion based on the facts. Everyone likes to go to the races some time from time to time. Yeah, but this one buy, but not everyone buys this many tickets. Anyway, I don't believe that proves anything on its own. You're right, but I'm not through yet. Mr. L's gambling wasn't restricted to horse races, wasn't it? It was not. It's not. These are horse races. Oh yeah, it was freaking lottery, lottery tickets. Is this it? There's the lottery ticket. Here it is. The lottery horse racing racing. He brought a lot of tickets and lost a lot of times. That's got to hurt. He's worked pretty badly, you think? Bad, maybe bad enough to in, uh, enough to cause some pretty serious trouble, perhaps. No. You're right, Glenn did have a gambling habit. You good people must not follow his example, do you understand? Trust me, even if I wanted to, I don't exactly have the money to buy any. But if you win, there's no problem, is there? And Glenn had a winning ticket, didn't he? For half a million dollars. Yeah, but it's hard to imagine how he could have been in trouble then, isn't it? It's true that Mr. Elg won half a million dollars in the end, but that was his first <laughs> stroke of good luck. He was in deep trouble before that. Deep trouble? What do you mean? Mr. Glenn Elg's real problem... Oh, ferocious. oh yes. Mr. Tiger, surely, is it? Should be him. Oh shit. Did I get this right? People with business should think harder before naming their officers. Like you all want to talk, well, what do you think? Our firm is doing very well at the moment. I don't think we need to borrow money. No, no, no. I mean, about Mr. Glenn, Mr. Elg. You think Glenn had something to do with Fear Tiger? Yes. I'm sorry, I don't know any connection between the two. Really? Because I've got proof that Mr. Elg and the Tiger know each other. Uh, let's go to evidence. Because I've got proof that they know each other. They do know each other. Oh, here we go. Furio Tigre, aka the Tiger, is the boss of a loan office called Tenderlender. 
This is who Mr. Elk w met with on the day of his murder. And the only thing a loan shark would talk to him about would be his death. Okay, one more down, one more to go. It's true that Glenn had racked up a bit of a debt from his gambling habit. About $100,000, I think? $100,000? Ouch! But I heard he won the lottery, so he should have been in the clear. Shame Maggie can get a bit of, good, of that good luck. Okay. So the guy got lucky and won the lottery. But what if he hadn't won? What was his plan then? Well, isn't, this isn't easy to say, but he said he would use his talents to repay the money. His talents? I suspect he was talking about programming. What computer program is worth $100,000? Perhaps you good people should leave so I can get back to work. I'm so close to cracking her. The program in question is this. If I can find it. Is it? Here we go. MC Bomber. Well, this is it, isn't it? This is the virus that infected the computers worldwide as we speak. MC Bomber? No! Okay, tell us what you know. Glenn's head had more processing power than, than any computer. It had been infected with a gambling virus. Glenn was in too deep. He was in debt? Yes, $100,000 in debt. Not an easy amount to repay. So, he said he was working on some, some extra work. Something a bit risky. Risky? How? Maybe he was going to become a waitress at Trey Beyond. Where do you come up with these ideas? So, it's safe to say Mr. Elk was the creator of this virus, huh? The MC Bomber virus, yes. It was a work of genius, in a bad sort of way, of course, but still genius. Something like that which would have probably fetched several million dollars in the black market. Inconceivable. Gumshoe was right for a change. The date, December 3rd, that is marked on his calendar. It was his deadline to repay for repaying his debts. I guess we won't be needing these racehorse tickets anymore. Use a trash can, Nick. That's not very nice. You should use a trash can. Anyway, I think we did everything we needed to do. One other thing. Risky yes, we were. We already talked. We were talked to her about this? Oh, we did. Okay, so... Now we can go to Viola and break her Psylocke. So, everything's done with that. So let's go to Viola. Uh, move. And then... And then square. And then... Uh, it's... Okay. Here she is. Alright. Time to spill the beans, Viola. Or Violetta, whatever your freaking name is, it feels a bit. Or Viola, I'm guessing. You said that the bandage around your head was for an operation. You also said you fractured, you suffered a fatal injury to the head, correct? Yes. The operation was very difficult, apparently. Now, by fatal injury, you mean you were hurt very badly somehow, right? He, he. Did the injury in question have something to do with this? Hmm. Oh, I did this a bit too early. Let's get out of here first. What we need to do? Oh, it's this right here. Let's see. This round door thing is the room, I think. I fi figured I'd re read a book or something. Okay. I had done this before. Uh. I missed something out. But there's the Japanese chess piece. It's the king. Not that I'm an expert or anything. I'm more of a reverse heat person, you know. Assuming, assuming she knows what she's talking about. These things aren't typical. Monsters, wannabe items, they're not trophies. 
Are they? Hey, there's a piece of paper sticking in, in, the, in between them here. Uh, repel bill. Looks like he did some repair work on his car. Fifty thousand dollars for replacing a bumper and a light. That's insane. The cars are just the kind of art. The kind of very knee knees. I don't know. Okay. So now we have everything that we need to uh, um, talk to her about. So uh, let's visit the Magatama. Speed this up. Yeah, it, it's this. We need to show. I, she got hit by a car. I have here a car repair bill. From this, it seems pretty obvious that this car was involved in an accident. Let me see that. This bill is made out to the, the ver, very nice. Yes, it is. I don't think I've ever introduced myself. Tell me. What did the Kada Veronese have to do with me? Something t tells me she's not about to say hi and introduce herself. Alright then. Your relationship with the Kada Veronese is very strong. This is why. Ow. In my hand. Your grandfather. I know exactly who you are, Viola Kada Veronese. You sustained that injury in a traffic accident, didn't you? It happened about four months ago. I was driving in one of my on one of our family cars when someone pulled out in front of me. It was a motorbike or something like that. I don't remember much. Anyway, I swerved to try to avoid it, but I took a blow to the head, a bad one. Yeah, I can imagine. So what happened to the person on the bike? I'm guessing they didn't want, didn't get away with injury, injuring the the Violi Cadaveri, right? Verney. I I don't know what happened to them. They ran away, or so I heard. Ran away? If they stayed, I'd have. <laughs> hmm. Is it possible? Could that person who made a hit and run could have been this man right here? It was this man, wasn't it? He was the cause of the accident. It wasn't Don Ti Tiger. I refuse to believe it. It's Don Tigre, isn't it? I'll say it wrong. We collided the motorbike in my car. But Don Tigre isn't injured at all, is he? Isn't the Tiger who caused Viola's crash? I can feel it. Plus, one of her locks just broke, so she must suspect it was him too. I'm sorry, Miss Cadaverni, but I had to prove that the tiger was involved in a traffic accident on your bike. Okay. <laughs> oh yeah, it's because it's, if we look at the scooter, it's smashed up. It's not exactly a motorbike, but still. Mr. Tigre rides around on the scooter, doesn't he? And you'll notice that the front wheel is badly damaged. Mr. Cadaverin, Miss Cadaverini, you know the truth, don't you? He he he. This repair bill was paid by Furio Tigre. The Cadaverinis have known for ages who caused the accident, haven't they? It's possible, perhaps. Somewhere inside me, I know that may be true. I knew it. But, Don Tigre still saved my life. The operation was very complicated. It was very, very expensive. How much are we talking? Very, very, very expensive. She seems kind of hesitant about giving me an actual figure. I should back off. Well, anyway, it was the tiger, it was the t tiger who paid for it, right? After I recovered, Don Tigre told me. He said he would pay for the operation because he cared about me. I, I believe him. Really? But do you honestly believe that that is true? Do you want to know what, what I think? I think the reason he paid for the operation wasn't because of you, but because of someone else. He was scared of what would happen. 
because of who your granddad is. Perhaps, I shouldn't be saying this, but your grandfather, Bruto Cadaverni, controls a lot of dubious cash, right? And you are his beloved pride and joy. Sure, I don't know exactly how much the operation cost, but if you weren't the granddaughter of Mr. Cadaverni, do you think Mr. Tigre would have paid the money? One million dollars. One million dollars. That that's a lot of money. <laughs> I can't even think of one million dollars. Alright, head bandage. Four months ago, I was in a traffic accident. That's why I need the operation. When I woke up, they told me it was nothing serious. A simple procedure. Oh, really? Well, I guess if she recovered in four months, it couldn't have been a, too big. They said the operation cost one million dollars. Uh, a million bucks? I, I'm not sure there's there's actual... I'm going to have to search this up if there's a one million dollar surgery. If that has ever happened before, because that would be ridiculous. In compensation. Compensation, huh? It's on the world lingo for paying money to set a score. Basically, pay or get in, in some serious trouble. But million bucks? This has to be related to, the po to, the poison, to our poison case somehow. I, I wanted to believe him. I wanted to trust what Don Tigre said. He said it was nothing to do with my father, grandfather being Bruto Cadaverni. I wanted to believe he helped me because he cared about me, not be, not about my grandfather. But I knew that wasn't really true. Oh, I'm so sorry. Oh, she's crying. Oh, that's sad. What what he did to get the money was it was evil. He said it was all all for me, so I I helped him. You helped him? In what in what way? Here, take these. What are you, what are these? Medical papers? I'm Bruto Cadaverini's daughter granddaughter. He had to pay compensation. He he was made an offer, he simply couldn't refuse. Ah, I see what you did there, game! <laughs> Gonna have to make that Godfather reference sometime. <laughs> I'll make you an offer you couldn't have refused. Wow, I feel so bad for Viola. I haven't actually watched The Godfather. I don't know, I'm 20 years old. I mean, I'm at this point where, you know, <laughs> going back and watching all movies is like, yeah. I've watched part of part three, but I kind of got confused. But anyway, The God the Godfather is like, both part, I've heard part one and part two were really good, but part three was unnecessary. That's what I've heard about it anyway. Right, about... Right, after we finish our espresso, yeah, I won't need to con to convince Viola of anything else, so I guess I can get rid of those. Thrown into the trash. Alright. So, let's keep moving, we got time. And make our way to Trevian. Ooh, uh, bonjour, I have been waiting for you to return. Mr. Armstrong? Ah, good timing. I was hoping to find you here. We'd like to... What? Well, I was talking. <laughs> it's Phoenix talking, not him. God's sake. I was asking... Well, he, has, he hasn't got anything to, to say to you, fellas. Oh, no, it's a tiger. Ah, Shin Eop. Who are you calling Jin Oob? Ah! Come out from under the table already, Amaya. Okay, hand it over. What? You just want to play games with me? I won't recommend that. The medical papers, now! Uh oh. I think he wants Viola Cadaver. Cadaver. papers back. You mean this? The million dollar medical papers? This is kind of very, very nice. Trust you. Let's have a look at these before he takes them. One million dollars for cranial surgery. Payment was due last year. Okay. That's why she said that she helped you. Forget about it. That girl's dumber than a 
than, than an eggplant. <laughs> you you just wanna know what's sad? I'll tell you what's sad. It ain't only her face. She thinks she got power because she's brutal as a little girl. Now that's sad. I can't let you have these papers. Tomorrow in court, I'm gonna expose what you did to get the one to get the one million you used to pay this off. Are you crazy or something? I don't care if you wanna give it to me or not. There's two of us here. You got that too. We, 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 Mr. Armstrong. Forgive me, Desolate. I cannot argue with him. Ah, that really hurt. Is that all you got? I'll be taking those papers now. Armstrong, get that lighter. W wait, don't take it too hard. Finish right. That was so stupid. I shouldn't have let my guard down. Those medical papers were vital evidence. Hold it, pal! Detective Gumshoe! Detective? You think you can stop me, copper? Beat it, girl! Whoa, whoa! Come on! C come on, Gumshoe! Give it together! You guys, get out of here! Leave this guy to me! But, but, go, pal! And take this! If you get hurt, who'd look after Maggie, huh? Alright, thanks, Gumshoe. Wait, Nick, don't leave me behind. You're the one hiding under the table. I'll get even with, <laughs> I'll get even with that guy tomorrow in court. Ten and then it's going down. And it will go down in the next part, ladies and gentlemen. We are going to start off the second day of our trial so thank you guys for watching hope you guys enjoyed leave a like if you did enjoy and of course subscribe for more and i'll see you guys later for some more phoenix right easy tony trials and tribulations peace